Rise and shine. Let's start another beautiful day in the kitchen. Love these early summer mornings when you open these heavy curtains and the sun is already in the sky. Let's get our last bit for the shift and let's go. Good morning. So it's a little bit more chilled morning. I know it's a bit weird for me to see myself with a sweater. Yeah, it's quite chilled week. It doesn't really feel like uh, you're in the center of the capital, even though it's kind of late, just before six, but the city is still very, very empty. Today, I won't work on morning pastries. I will start with dough and start a refresh. However, we will slowly see bread production and what we put on the counter. First of all, we bake sourdough bread, which has rested in the fridge throughout the night. Yesterday, towards the end of the shift, we shaped all these loaves and fortunately, we have a lot of space in the oven, so we can bake quite a lot in one go. Now we're taking the baguette dough, which we made it yesterday. So since it's cold, we are portioning in a kind of oblong shape and leaving to rest so the gluten strands can relax and the dough comes back to room temperature. After around 40 minutes, we shape them and leave it to proof for a final round. Later, baguettes get scored and baked. Let's see how it looks inside. Now we start working on the muffins. We also mixed the dough yesterday, so today we are taking the dough out, flatten it and cut it with the metal rings. Here muffins are already proofed and ready to take off from the prover to the oven. 3, 2, 1, bake! Because of the local grown flour and bakery's recipe, they taste really lovely. Let's head back to our wooden bench. There is quite a lot of dough left, so we are going to reshape it and make bread out of it. So all these scraps get weighed up in the small balls. After that we pre-shape them and leave them to rest. Then we give a second round of rolling so they look round and nice. Then we move to pastry sheeter and start passing through the breaks. Nothing complicated at this point, we just make sure the shape is nice and even. Once we finish with the trays, we dot it and leave it to rest. Soon it gets baked and then later we continue filling this bread with different fillings and making sandwiches. At this point the starters are fermented enough so we start mixing it with sourdough bread. This bread has probably gotten the most interesting ingredient. It has yudane, wholemeal and strong bread flour, sweet starter, sugar, milk, salt and butter. It is so rich in flavor. Once it's mixed, we leave it to proof till this line. Then prepare the tins and leave the dough for the second proof. While mixing these breasts, we refresh starters too. So there is no kind of a rule that we do only starter refresh or only mixing breads. We mix both jobs together. I begin with the stiff one as we mix it in a standing mixer, not by hand. With the rest of the refresh process is very simple. Adding a proportion of fermented starter into flour and water and mixing everything together. We have three types of starters, dry, sweet and stiff sourdough starter. It only takes some minutes for stiff starter to mix. And look at that, I'm done with the starter refresh. Look at this amount of rhubarb. We won't be able to do the prep today, but in the upcoming days, we all gonna spend some good hours peeling and cutting them. The goal of this massive batch is to make candied rhubarbs. Let's forget about them today and continue with the dough. This bread is least complicated to make, mixing all these ingredients with a paddle and distributing the batter into oiled 
thins. The only flour we use for this bread is rice, so it means this bread loaf will not grow massively as the flour itself doesn't contain glutenin, which forms the elasticity in dough. So the seeds are soft because we soaked them yesterday. Very simple but useful tip is to dip a spatula into water and then flatten and smoothen it out so the loaves look even. Then we pop it in the prover for two and a half hours and bake for around 40 minutes. Very, very nutritious and simple bread. Moreover, widely popular in the Nordic countries. It is time to roll again. My colleague just mixed a batch of burger buns. It has rested sufficiently and we are going to jump on this job now. Together with my colleague, we portion and pre-shape the whole thing without adding any extra flour and we leave to rest as we will give a final shaping later. And here comes one more tray. Once the buns are bench proofed, we give them a final shaping. This time we use a bit of flour. Tray by tray, we are getting closer to finish them. Egg wash them and fill the oven with trays. An army of golden puffy buns is ready for deliveries and the counter. Thinking about today's staff lunch, the head chef mixed the dough yesterday. As we are approaching lunch time, the dough gets stretched very slowly, giving enough time to relax gluten strands. Once the dough is ready, we are topping it with the seasonal mushrooms, local vegetables, mincemeat, and on my personal request, we left a part with only vegetables. The staff food definitely deserves a title staff food, as everyone put in some effort. Someone mixed the dough, someone sliced the vegetables, someone made the sauce, someone baked and gave final touches. Let's take a break from flour and dough and together with my colleague, let's make macarons. We start doing macarons by weighing up the ingredients. It may sound kind of obvious, but it is important to leave ingredients at room temperature as egg whites whip up to a much greater volume when at room temperature. First step is to make macaronash. Then, while we let syrup boil, we mix the meringue, not too fast at the beginning, but once we are close to reach the temperature we want, we increase the speed, slowly pouring the syrup and whipping the meringue until stiff. Then we mix macaronage with an Italian meringue in 3-4 parts. We don't want to make it too loose, as it won't retain the volume. So once the both parts are mixed, we are going to pipe the batter. We pour the batter into a couple of piping bags, remove all the air trapped inside and arrange the tray with marked circles or the size we want. We pipe it relatively fast, trying to hold the piping bag in 90 degrees angle. Then we bash the tray on the table and remove all the remaining imperfections by smoothing out the surface. We leave it to dry for half an hour and bake it for 11 minutes. After it's baked, we immediately put them into a blast chiller. In the gaps between tasks, we do quick chops like this, some preparation which is preparing honey cake dough sheets. We share just between our colleagues, so for example, if one makes the dough, then me, for example, can pass it through the sheeter. Again, the most important thing is to make them even and nice. Then, not necessarily today, they get baked and as soon as they are out of the oven, we press the ring and get exact size we want. Like in the morning, we do start a refresh, adding a new portion of flour, water, which is temperature controlled and kept in the fridge so we can temper it to achieve the temperature we want and of course a small amount of starter. Oops, I forgot we mixed the stiff starter straight away in the mixing bowl. Okay, no worries, let's quickly rearrange and finish with the rest. Sweet is also done with strong flour, but we additionally add some sugar. And rice starter refresh is only done with dry flour.
We only leave when the kitchen is clean, bins are out, aprons and towel put away. So talking about experience, like summarizing everything, I feel uh, overwhelmed in a good way. It's very well organized, very creative, using local ingredients. They try to use pretty much everything produced in Lithuania. So they talk with the small farmers, they get even flour. It's a little bit more difficult to work with it because the climate is not designed to grow high protein wheats. So they work with what they have and they produce really good quality. I'm actually impressed because they work the recipe so well. So they know how to work with it, how to adjust things. They get honey from small farms. It's just all these little details. And I hope people notice that when they eat the cakes. So I leave Vilnius with warmest experience in my heart. You know what? One thing that really impresses me here in Vilnius that it is super, super green. I missed it so much. Beautiful oak trees, beautiful sunset. I think uh, my day will end very soon because tomorrow I leave. I went with my family, I'm gonna pack my suitcase, prepare myself. You know, as they say, all good things come to an end. I'm not gonna lie that there's a lot of behind the scenes going on, so I need to prepare that, which takes a huge amount of time. But that you probably see more on my Instagram, where I share more my daily life, what's happening in the kitchen. And uh, I wanna finish video from this beautiful spot just here. It's kind of, I don't even wanna put my phone away because it's just so beautiful. It makes me so happy. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week.